Hello there everybody, Sam's Trades here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to a review of a Backman train set. So, already on this channel I've looked at loads of Backman steam locos, quite a lot of Backman diesels, and also quite a lot of Backman train packs, but something that I've never, never done is a Backman train set, and today I'm going to rectify that situation. So, are you ready for this? I'll just haul it in. I have got this. This is the Midland Marvel train set from Backman, my first ever Backman train set. Now, this thing is a real bargain. I bought this from Hattons, you might be surprised to hear, for £110.46, pence, I think it was. Slightly strange figure there, but uh, yeah, about 110 quid either way. Now, to start with, that might sound like quite a lot of money for this. However, I completely think that it's not. And in fact, I would say this is one of the most insane bargains I've got. Okay, so why does that sound a lot for a train set? Well, I think because there aren't that many Backman train sets about. Most of the brand new train sets you get in the UK these days are made by Hornby, and most of them are pretty cheap. You tend to only pay, what? between 50 and 70 quid, I would say, for most Hornby train sets. And the reason being that they're quite basic. In fact, the locos specifically are quite basic. What do you get? Um, yeah, a, a, like a 70 quid Hornby train set tends to come, say, with an 040 little shunter in it or something like that. Or the slightly more silubrious ones might have an 060 Jinty or something like that in it as well. But they're basic models, they're railroad models. And don't get me wrong, Hornby do have some upmarket train sets as well. They have sort of Flying Scotsman and A4 train sets. Still though railroad locos, but then they're way beyond the realms of £110. So what you've got inside here is actually a sort of top quality Backman model. This is a Midland 3F 060 Tender Loco. I think it's from the same sort of ilk as that Dealey 060 I showed. The trying one, of course, but obviously much more modern. So yeah, it's a serious Loco in this pack, and I think the rolling stock will be super detailed as well. We'll take a look at that. But also, this is the real clincher. The Loco, right, the full price of the Loco itself is £120. So if you were to buy the Loco at full price, it would be £10 more expensive than this train set. And so for £10 less than the Loco, you actually get the Loco, but on top of that you get the track, the controller, the rolling stock, and whatever else you get inside here. So this is an insane bargain, I would say, and for 110 quid, you really can't go wrong, or at least I couldn't resist it. So anyway, Hatton still have these in stock for that price, and if you want to check it out, I will include a link in the description. But for now, I can't really hold this off any longer. I'm desperate to get this out and find out what this is like. So let's take a look at the Backman Midland Marble train set. Okay, so there it is. Now, the first thing that I must say straight away, the first thing I've noticed, is that the packaging isn't quite as sturdy as some of the other Backman train sets, well, train packs that I've looked at. Uh, the ambulance train pack, I seem to remember, and the railway children train packs had really, really solid, sort of really thick cardboard boxes. Uh, this one is not at all. It's very, very thin cardboard. So I'm hoping that the packaging within this box is going to be a lot better. I'm hoping it's not just in a polystyrene tray because then it's really not that well protected. Either way, only a minor thing, I'm sure the train set will be absolutely fine inside, or fingers crossed, let's hope so. So there we go, on the front of the box you've got this lovely artwork of the Midland 3F, which we will talk about in just a second, and some of the rolling stock you get with it too. If we look a little bit further down, you can see some of the content, so yes, you get the loco, you get two plank wagons, a brake van, also the wool transformer, obviously, the controller, and the oval of track. And just looking at the picture of what you get there, it just looks like a really nice long train. And I think what it is, is the fact that the loco is a tender loco so the tender obviously just adds that little bit of extra length to the train it's only a tiny sort of one wagon's worth but it just makes the train look so much more substantial and i think that's fantastic so really really looking forward to seeing how that goes if i just turn the box upside down you can see a little bit more so it says about your backman train set that's just basically a bit about train sets really and how you can expand them now in the middle here i saw all sorts of track and when i first saw that i thought wow do we get all of this in the train set then I realised that I was an idiot, and no, that's just some of the parts that you can buy if you want to add to it. And then there's a bit on the side here about the Backman Collectors Club, uh, which I incidentally don't know an awful lot about. Okay, so let's try and get this out then, shall we? I think I've said all there is to say about it before I open the box, so let's do that now and have a look, shall we? This will be the first time I've actually opened this. So, oh okay, oops, I've probably said the wrong thing then, because it is indeed in a polystyrene tray, and in fact there's nothing to protect any of this stuff, just except this thin film and the, the sort of rubbish cardboard. 
Mm. So I'm hoping that everything's in good shape. I'm really hoping so. So what shall we do first then? I will leave the loco and rolling stock until last because I think they're the most exciting parts. So we'll take a look in here first. And we have here, okay, well that looks like a track clip. So that's what you use to connect the controller to the track, I think. So that's fairly nice. Yep, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, here we have the controller itself. Now, again, this is quite interesting to me because I've never owned one of these uh, Backman branch line controllers. So this will be interesting to actually test it out and see what this is like. Uh, so yeah, what an interesting thing. It, it feels pretty good quality. It doesn't feel too light and flimsy, actually. So maybe this is going to be a decent controller. As it stands, I have no idea, but hopefully it will be. It's quite cool. Okay, so we have some wire, wires and accessories and things here. Let's take a quick look. Oh, we've got a detail bag here. Okay, let's show you that. So inside there we have a speaker housing, quite obviously. We've got some brake rigging for the loco and tender, and also what appear to be some screw link couplings inside there, which is excellent. And also some screws. I don't know whether they're, yeah, I suppose they're probably to fit the speaker or help fit the speaker if that's what you want to do. But no, as it comes, the loco is just DCC ready, I think. Well, I think it is. Uh, yes, it should be, because we've just got a DC controller, haven't we? And then inside there we have, let's see, the transformer, it appears. Yep, the power transformer and the wire wires and things there for the train set. And there's also something else inside there, a bit of plastic. Ah, okay. So again, yeah, there's no greater evidence of what I was saying about the poor packaging than this. So here we have part of the glazing from the inside of the 3F cab. And as you can see, it's got some of the gauges from uh, inside the cab there on it. So yeah, the loco has indeed been damaged by the poor packaging. So yeah, definitely a strike. I didn't think I would uh, emphasize that before because it's only a minor thing, but indeed the loco has been damaged. So that is not very good, Backman. Come on now, these are expensive train sets. The least you can do is find a way to package them properly. Oh well, not a big deal. Well, it is quite a big deal, actually. I'm not going to say it's not a big deal, because it is. When you've spent any sort of money like this, uh, you really should expect for it to be in good shape. And I can see that there's more damage yet. In fact, where this plastic... Yeah, there's like a hole in this plastic film, and I can see that the handrail behind it just there, look, has been damaged as well. So yeah, Backman, come on. You're not kids, are you? Surely you could have foreseen that this would have been a problem. Uh, a very expensive loco damaged by inadequate packaging, frankly. <sighs> That's a bit disappointing. Never mind. Right, so let's get the loco then, if I can, without it actually busting. Um, let's see if there's any holes in the back. Um, no, there are no holes in the back. <laughs> Yeah, backmen don't know what they're doing, do they? <laughs> That's what I'm going to say about this. At least not on the packaging front. Right. Let's try and hold this in front of the camera then for you. Okay, so, excuse the damage. It isn't my fault, unfortunately. We've got a damaged handrail there and part of the cab detailing missing just because the packaging was inadequate. But other than that, as you can see, it looks like a really beautiful loco and I'm going to review this properly for you when we get it up against the white background. Yeah, it looks really lovely and this is not a, a loco that I've ever owned before. So it's really nice to actually have this in the LMS black as well, which I think looks really, really cool. So there we go. That is LMS Johnson slash Dealey 060 and it's number 3522. Yes, very lovely indeed. Okay, so I'll put that to one side, ready for repairs. Yes, don't like having to do repairs straight out of the box, but there's there's not a lot I can do really, is there? Okay, so let's take a look at some of these wagons then. Now, these are quite large wagons. Uh, how many planks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plank. I think that's an eight plank wagon if I've managed to count right under pressure. So there we go, as you can see, and this is, you know, this is what makes the train set a bargain, in my opinion, because this is a super detailed Backman wagon. As you can see, it's got the metal wheels, it's got the NEM couplings, it's got a great level of detail on it, and the insides painted up as well. Uh, so for your money, you know, considering you're getting this for less than the price of the loco on its own, uh, it's things like this that make it worthwhile, and that's just the first wagon. So let's see if the second one's the same in that regard. Okay, this is really quite awkward given that there's no holes in the back. There we go, I've got it. Okay, so a very lovely wagon once again. So what's this one? William Wood and Sons, Huddersfield. Very, very lovely. Quite a nice red colour on this one. It's quite the same really in terms of the level of detail. It's got the metal wheels, this time even with uh, lining around the wheels, which we'll get to later on. And once again, the NEM pockets and the NEM couplings fitted as well. So yeah, I mean, these retail for at least 10 quid, don't they? I think really, really good that you get these in a decent train set like this. That's good. I'm starting to warm to this one a bit now, other than the rocky start. And then I think the creme de la creme, as far as rolling stock goes, is this LMS brake van, which looks absolutely wonderful. It's just such a shame that the packaging is so poorly realised, because 
you could very easily damage that trying to get it out. It's like a, a challenge. Okay, so this thing is incredible. Look at this thing. The fact that you get this in a train set, a cheap train set as well, is astonishing. So once again, it's got the metal wheels and them couplings, all of that good stuff, and it looks to be a super detailed one as well. I can see glazed windows. I can see separately fitted handrails. This alone would be worth 20 quid of anybody's money, I'm sure, if you were to buy this on it. So in fact, look it up. I guarantee you this will cost 20 quid at the very least. It looks fantastic. It really, really does. So that's great. You get a fantastic amount of uh, loco and rolling stock for your money there for 110 quid. So that's fantastic. Um, we don't seem to have had any track out of here yet, so I'm assuming that's all going to be inside the box here. Oh, yes, it is. OK, so I tell you what, you also get a large, large oval of track as well. So we've got two long straights here normally with the hornby train sets the cheaper ones you just get sort of a half straight don't you but this is like a full straight if that's what it is or a double straight that's it uh, so that's really cool i like that and then you've got some curves here now i'm not sure if these are third radius curves they look to me like they might be first or second radius i will have to check i don't want to go saying that if it's not true i will have to check and let you know later on but you've got two packs of those so that makes one sort of 180 degree curve and this makes the other one. So you've got two of those. And then very, very quickly then, let's just take out this little tray and have a look what this is. It says getting started in double O scale. So this is quite a nice little bonus. So let's take a look. So there we go, getting started in double O scale. And oh, it's quite a, a nicely printed brochure actually. Yes, what's this? Oh, it's a poster, wow. Free poster with the train set as well, with a lovely Southern Railway C-Class on the front. So that's lovely, you get your poster there. Uh, I think there's some instructional material on the back of there. And then you also have, please read this leaflet before using this train set. Well, I ain't gonna read it, but I will just flick through it so that you can look if you like. So yeah, it's just a little bit of housekeeping, isn't it? Connecting power supplies, operation, all that good stuff. So yeah, obviously if this is your first train set, you would want to take a look at that. But yeah, overall, very, very impressed. You get an awful lot for your money, or at least for £110. I dread to think what this would cost, you know, at a Backman price. But for Hatton's price of £110, uh, you really can't go wrong. And you get an awful lot of nice bonuses, including the very, very super detailed brake van. And of course, the pretty cool poster that you get. So I like this. This is really, really good. I'm looking forward now to getting this together. And this has to be the most luxurious train set that I've ever owned. But I don't think it was the most expensive. So I'm going to get all this together. I will show you the loco first of all, and then I'll show you the rolling stock up against the white background. But first of all, here is a bit more information about the Midland Railway 3F. OK, let's have a listen. So the classification of these engines as a 3F took place actually quite a long while after the engines were initially built. This particular example was originally known as the Midland Railway M or 1873 class, which was introduced in 1892 to the design of Samuel W. Johnson. Now, the Johnson 060 was just an umbrella term for many similar classes from the same designer, the earliest of which dating back to 1875, I believe. In total, 935 of these 060s were constructed, which was an astonishing amount, especially for the time, making it one of the largest classes of engine on British rail railways in history, I would say. Now, as with many Midland Railway locomotives, these passed into LMS ownership following the grouping of 1923, and while many of them did survive into the British Railways era, sadly none remain preserved today, which is pretty unlucky, I would say, given the huge number of them built. Okay, so there she is then, the Midland 3F, and I must say this thing is absolutely fantastic, and to see a model of this calibre in a train set is very, very impressive, I must say. So we will take a closer look at this in just a second, but first of all, I have been able to affect some of the repairs. I say some, I have managed to put the cab detail back inside, which by the way was one heck of a job. It was a very awkward spot to get to, and also you've got to be very, very careful not to disturb any of the other cab details and the handrails and things which are around the cab area. Unfortunately, the handrail on the side of the cab I've decided not to attempt to straighten because I just thought it's going to come off in my hands and look even worse. So that I've left as it is. But that just serves, I think, as a pretty reasonable demonstration of Backman's occasional incompetence. I have no idea whatsoever why Backman would think packaging so shoddy as that was acceptable, let alone a good idea. 
So your guess is as good as mine on that, I have no idea. And of course, the worst part about it is that we know backmen are capable of doing better because their train packs, such as the ambulance train and the railway children, to name just two, all had very, very high quality packaging indeed. So they must have made a conscious decision to make the packaging a bit shoddy on this, which is a little bit annoying, isn't it, I must say. However, I think I'm quite lucky that the Loco wasn't damaged any more than it was, and I think it's now in at least satisfactory condition. So the Loco itself is a good quality Loco, I must say, even by Backman standards. So there's a lot of die cast on it, making it pretty heavy, and the tender, by the way, is pretty heavy as well. I think that's to do with the size of the coal load and the fact that it's die cast, but we'll talk about the tender in just a second. Yes, the running board of the Loco is die cast, which makes it really, really nice and heavy. The bulk of the bodywork, I believe, is made of plastic, but there are one or two nice metal details details such as the whistle and safety valves just in front of the cab and that metallic finish on those really does make them look realistic in my opinion very very impressive indeed you've got the separately fitted metal handrails as is standard these days the smoke box door is very nicely detailed with the running number on there as well as more separately fitted handrails and a lamp iron as well the buffer beams are very nicely detailed as well as you can see we do have the vacuum pipe pre-fitted as well as sprung buffers which are sprung there we go just demonstrate there once again, quite nicely separately fitted lamp irons as well on the running board. The model is finished off with a small amount of painted detail, not a lot on this as per the livery of LMS Black, but one or two nice bits, for example, the font on the side of the cab there, the running number, very, very nicely applied. You can see the classification there as well as a 3F just on the cab, which is nice and legible. And then on the centre splash, you can see what appears to be the builder's plate as well, and I will try and get a close-up on that if I possibly can. A couple of small downsides with this is the fact that unfortunately underneath the boiler there is no representation of the internal valve gear and in fact it is just a flat surface inside there um, which isn't very realistic obviously there are no outside cylinders on this and so the valve gear and the cylinders would all be inside that area somewhere so not particularly realistic is that feature but around the other side you can see there is quite a lot of apparatus mounted to the side of the smoke box on there which is all very nicely realized and pretty well detailed the cab as you can see now that it's been finished off and finished by my good self is pretty good you've got the glazed windows there which look very nice indeed and inside the cab the level of detail is astonishing you can see all of the painted detail on the gauges and things you've got the wood paneling effect on the floor and the cream paint in the back of the cab it's a very exposed cab so that was absolutely necessary but the cab really does look very impressive so hats off to Backman for that and also the wheel set looks really nice and fine as well as you can see the the axles have been blacked out so that you can't really see them on the wheels the coupling rods are nice and fine scale, which look really, really impressive. And you can see you've got those sanding pipes pre-fitted as well. Uh, makes, makes it a nightmare to dismantle, obviously. But uh, yeah, for that extra bit of realism, you definitely can't fault those there. So the Loco itself looks really, really good. And for a train set Loco, this is an unprecedented level of detail and quality, really. So very impressed with that. The tender is also very nicely realised. You can see we've got the LMS lettering on the side there, which looks very good indeed. Plenty of underframe detail, as you can see, with once again very, very nice quality wheels, as you can see. Very, very nice fine wheels on there. There is a small amount of painted detail where the cab connects, as you can see. You've got the uh, brake handle there, I think it is, which has been picked out in the silver. I've already mentioned the coal, but it is a very large load, as you can see, made of, well, it is die cast, I think, which gives it a plenty of weight to the tender. And you've also got this nice coal guard around the tender as well, which looks nice and realistic. And then around the back, you've got some printed details, which indicate the capacity of the tender, among other things. And once again, a nicely detailed buffer beam with the sprung buffers, of course. And just below there, you have got the NEM coupling fitted and the NEM couplings are fitted to the front and back of the model. So there we go, Loco looking really, really great. So here's a look at the two wagons that came in this train set then, and I'm not going to spend too long on these because I'm quite conscious of the fact that there's a lot to see today. But as you can see, they really do look great. I think, unless I'm much mistaken, I think they are basically the same model, that is, that they are produced using the same tooling. But obviously the livery on each of them does make them look vastly different to each other. So yeah, as you can see up close, the application of the livery is just second to none. It really is very, very well done, especially on the William Wood and Sons wagon on the right-hand side there really really nicely done there's also an awful lot of detail on these and i think generally these wagons if you're buying them separately and buying them new they tend to have quite a high retail price uh, yeah as you can see look at the underframe detail much of this is separately fitted too very very nicely done the insides are all decked out with the paneling effects well, well the plank effects rather uh, as you can see very nicely done and the end of each wagon is very well detailed as well there's an awful lot of riveting going on there and the buffer beams look reasonably good as well although there are no sprung buffers on these they are just sort of static buffers but generally 
generally for train set wagons, these are really, really impressive and I do love the way they look together. So yes, absolutely fantastic. Really, really impressed with the wagons. The brake van though is even more impressive. In fact, quite dramatically so. I would probably say that this is more or less the most detailed piece of rolling stock I've ever seen in a train set before, in a starter set. It really is that impressive. And in fact, I have spent quite a lot of money on Backman brake vans before, which I've bought separately, which were nowhere near as detailed as this. So very quickly then, the painted detail is just second to none. You've got the running number 430 there, as well as the LMS logo printed onto the sides. And as you can see, the fact that they're printed onto the wood panelling effects gives it that lovely texture, which is fantastic. The steps, for want of a better term, are also separately painted into a slightly brownish colour, which looks absolutely superb. And the verandas there, as you can see, have got the wood panelling effect down on the ground which is wonderful. The handrails are all separately fitted on this model so you've got them on the verandas there but also across the main body of the brake van you can see those are all separately fitted. The large one at the bottom has quite a large span on it and so it does flex quite a bit when you touch it uh, but it does seem to be reasonably sort of rubbery and quite flexible rather than brittle and easy to snap so I think that's a pretty good thing. As you can see, I can't really see if there's any interior on these. I don't think there is, but there are glazed windows, which is a really, really nice touch. And underneath, you can see there's an awful lot of separately fitted, or possibly not separately fitted, but either way, an awful lot of underframe detail there, which is very, very impressive. And it is undoubtedly a top quality model. It's reasonably heavy, actually, for a brake van. It's not as light as some we've looked at. And also, obviously, you've got the metal wheels and the NEM couplings with the tension lock couplings in them. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it just ticks all of the boxes, and I was not expecting expecting this to be anywhere near as detailed and as modern as it is. It really is a very, very impressive thing. So there we go. Now you've seen the loco and all of the rolling stock which comes with the train set. Now the only thing to do is get the track together and see how it all works when it's put together. Okay, so that all went together nice and easily, I would say. I will say also that I don't think the track is quite as good as Hornby. It seems functional enough, but the fish plates don't really seem to grip the rails quite as tightly as the Hornby ones do, which does make the track a little bit easier to put together, but then it feels a little bit flimsy, and I'm for, uh, even now, have not even run the loco yet, and I'm having to straighten the track and make sure the pieces aren't coming apart because they're not gripping that well. Also, this power track is a little bit fiddly as well. I must say it's not quite as intuitive as the Hornby one where you just have a power track and plug the controller straight in. And a bit more messing about to do there. The controller here is actually very nice. I've not tried it yet for running trains, so how practically good it is, I'm not absolutely sure. But the build quality seems to be pretty good. The way it feels, you've got this lovely click and then quite a nice bit of resistance as you try and turn it that feels very very nice so that is by far superior to the existing Hornby controllers although of course Hornby will be bringing out a new controller pretty soon so whether it's better than that or not I don't know one thing that's less nice is the direction switch that feels a little bit more flimsy it's not terrible but yeah it's not quite as good as this this feels lovely to use very very nice Finally, of course, you've only got second radius curves. I have checked them and these appear to be second radius curves. Again, not a very smart decision from Backman because the whole point of the train set is so that you can get started but then expand later on. And the problem with second radius track is that not all locos support it. I think most of them do, but there are some locos that require third radius or larger, which means that it isn't that expandable really. And generally Hornby do better there as well because unless it's the very cheapest, you know, 040 train set that goes around your Christmas tree, they do tend to supply third radius track, which is much better, I think. So it is functional, but it's not a patch on Hornby, in my opinion. Okay, so I've got the 3F down onto the track, which looks absolutely lovely. I can't wait to see that run. I'm going to try it with this new controller first, and then once we've gotten it going around this track and established that it can do that, I will take it onto the main layout and we'll run it properly. I've got the wagons a little bit further behind her. I won't couple to those straight away because we'll want to try her out um, on her own first. And with that, I think we'll get onto that straight away. So the loco itself, uh, mechanism wise, pretty good. No tender pickups, so that's the first strike. However, there do seem to be a proper set of bearings on the wheel set, which is very good indeed. It does have the standard Backman three pole motor, which isn't that great, but it's not that terrible either. And apart from that, yep, it seems to be fairly standard. I would say there's nothing great about the mechanism, but nothing terrible either. It seems to be actually, if I'm gonna be 
fair here. It seems to be very good quality. So yeah, that's not an issue. Okay, so first ever time trying out a 3F, a Backman 3F, and first ever time using a new controller on it. So I'll get the controller in shot very slightly and we'll give it a try. No idea what these controllers are like, so this will be very interesting. We'll see if it can do a crawl, shall we? Okay, so click, nice satisfying click. Start turning it up. Oh, I thought nothing was going to happen there, but it has. <laughs> Okay, well, backwards then. I was about to say I think there's been a, a fault, but no. You just have to turn it up quite a way before it shifts. And on this controller, it can't really do much of a crawl. In fact, it's not very controllable. <laughs> it's not bad. And it might be because the loco's not been run in yet. Yeah, that's not much of a crawl. I, I mean, the ultimate test will be to get it on my Hornby HM2000 and see if that's any better. But yeah, generally that's it's smooth, but not slow. So I don't know whether that's the loco at this point or the controller, but I do have the means to find that out. Okay, let's back up then and couple to the rolling stock. I mean, it's not been running yet, but I don't think it'll be a problem to couple to those because it's such a small, light load. There we go. So that was quite a nice coupling there. And yes, the train together does look fantastic, doesn't it? As I say, quite a nice big long train, really. Not long, really, but uh, longer than normal, I would say, from train packs on train sets. OK, so let's see her haul them then. I have noticed that you actually need to have the controller set to about half speed before the loco even starts. So I'm going to go out and say I think it's probably the controller that's not so great. But I could be wrong. OK. Let's see if we can do a crawl this time. Oops, I didn't change the direction. Silly me. Go on, forwards, little 3F. Well, that's not bad. I bet it will do better, though. I guarantee it will do better on my Hornby controller. So there we go, it's working very nice. And I do think that this train set is sufficient to give you the bug in model railways. And because it's so inexpensive, at least from Hattons, I think I can recommend it. I've noticed though that the engine is slowing down quite dramatically as it gets further away from the controller, which isn't very good. Again, that could be the controller. It might not be the same sort of controller that my Hornby controller is. That could be a thing. Or it could be the issue I've described with the track and the fish plates not being very tight on the rails. That could be causing a bit of resistance. But uh, yes, other than that, looks very nice. Get it going at a bit of a decent speed for you. And for a train set, I must say, I think this is very, very luxurious. It's a very impressive train set. OK, let's get it onto my main tracks then, and we'll give it a proper run, shall we, around the room. All right, so now she's down onto the main track, and as promised, I'm going to test her now with my main controller, my HM2000 by Hornby. And if this is much smoother and if it's able to go at a much slower speed, we'll know that it was the controller before and not the loco. So at the moment, I'm not sure. Let's give this a shot then. I'm just going to turn it up very, very slowly and see if we can't get a better crawl. We'll have to see what we think about this. Okay, so even though we have had a few locos do slower than this, it is dramatically slower than it was on the Backman controller, which suggests that the loco is just as good as most Backman locos and that the controller isn't really that great. But that's fair enough, it's a starter controller, it's a train set controller, they're not going to be that amazing. And obviously on a slightly better controller, such as the HM2000 or something similar, you're able to squeeze a much better crawl out of it. So that is pretty good. But otherwise, you know, at the higher speeds, it's basically undetectable. It's completely the same. It's easily as good as the Backman controller at uh, anything more than just a crawl. But at those very, very slowest speeds, you can tell a difference using a slightly better controller. So that's that. Also, I have measured the pulling power of this thing, and it can, well, the pulling force, I should say. It's not really power. Uh, 0.28 newtons, which is pretty low. It's pretty weak. Um, it's a bit more powerful than the LMYR Class 5, which I measured not too long ago. That had 0.2 newtons of pulling force. And it's just below the Backman C1, which was an Atlantic, of course, and that had 0.3 newtons of pulling force. So overall, I think that's about in keeping with the size of the loco and I think that pulling force is reasonable for the size of the loco. Okay, well, let's see how it goes on around the layout then. Let's give it a little bit of juice and uh, couple it to the rolling stock, of course. Let's go and do that again. There we are. We can do it a bit more gently this time. There we are. Cool. 
So I love it, I must say, I absolutely love this. The little 3F is just gorgeous, isn't it? Really, really lovely. Um, it's like a smaller, slightly cuter version of the Fowler 4F, I reckon. And with such beautiful rolling stock, let's bring that into shot. Oh, look at that. There is something about these wagons and the brake van. Just super, super high quality. And uh, yeah, it feels almost too good for a train set, doesn't it? But uh, if you start off with this, you know, if this is your first train set, um, well, it's great because obviously it's amazing, but it's bad because it's it's downhill from there. And if you buy almost other, any other train set, um, it's probably not going to be as detailed as this. Um, but yeah, absolutely top notch. Very, very impressive indeed. And then on the inside line, we have a loco that you might be a bit more familiar with. I think it's, I don't know whether it's exactly the same thing as the Backman, but it's certainly from the same sort of family and same sort of era as well. So this is the Dealey 3F. And uh, Richard Dealey did, I think, have something to do with the uh, the Johnson 3F as well, which I've just been looking at from Backman. Uh, so yeah, lovely loco. This is a trying one, of course, with some Pullman coaches. Had to run her because she's obviously quite similar. And speaking of quite similar, I have yet another sort of LMS 060 tender engine to show you. It is the 4F, uh, so slightly different history behind this one. Obviously, I don't, well, did these date back to the Midland Railway? They may have done, but it's, uh, it's certainly a, a lot later than the 3F, isn't it? Either way, yep, yeah, she's got quite a nice good strain. So let's see how these get on around the layout then, running together. Very nice. Nice and slow 4F there. So yeah. I think it's a superb train set. It's not particularly suitable for children, I would say, although with adult supervision and a lot of careful training, I think kids would be okay with it, but they would have to understand, or they would have to be made to understand how fragile the loco was. But apart from that, generally speaking, I would say this is a bit more suited to enthusiasts, maybe that want to get back into the hobby after quite a long hiatus, or somebody that's you know, wanting to get into the hobby in quite a serious way and doesn't necessarily want to start out with a, a cheaper Hornby train set with an 040 or something like that. So yeah, quite a few viable uses for this train set depending on your situation really. It should also be said though that the Midland 3F just here can I think be bought from Hattons for I think it was £70 and that's the LMS black version. So I was going to say that, you know, if you want to pick one of these up just because you want to get the loco and rolling stock quite cheap, it might not work out that way. So I would only suggest getting the train set if you need the track and the controller, because I reckon you could probably do just as well buying the loco and the wagon separately. But if you can make use of the controller and the track, it's worth it, as I say, and it's a very good price too. So be sure to let me know what you think about this train set down in the comment section. Is it worth the money? Would you buy it? Whatever your answers are, let me know, and let me know why. As you can tell, I did buy it, and I think, with hindsight, I'm glad I did. And if I had the choice whether to buy it again, I think I would. I would rather have it for that price than not have it. It's, uh, yeah, it's a good train set, and uh, it's blown my expectations now, and in fact, it's changed the way I think about train sets. To think that you can get such a good quality consist for not an awful lot of money. So here are some of my ratings then for the Backman Midland Marvel train set. Overall, I think it's a very, very impressive train set and I do like it. I like it a lot. So the level of detail then, I think I've been slightly generous, but I still think I can justify it in giving the level of detail five out of five. So I think the criticism I came up with, the only one really, was the fact that there was no sort of internal valve gear portrayed on the loco itself. However, I do think that that is redeemed by the other detail of the loco, obviously, and also the level of detail on the wagons, particularly the brake van. So I think overall the level of detail comes out at a five star. I think we've seen better detailed locos, but obviously it's not just the loco we're talking about here. I think the loco on itself, incidentally, would have arrived at about a four. What do you reckon? Let me know in the poll. How would you have rated the loco? Performance then, I've given this a 4 out of 5. The Loco itself performs quite nicely on my HM2000, but on the supplied controller, not quite so much. It's not really capable of doing a crawl. It's not greatly powerful either, as I say, 0.28 newtons. However, that's about what you'd expect for a Loco of that size. So I've given it 4 out of 5. Pretty good, pretty good, above average. The mechanism then, I've given this a 3.5 star. Now, obviously, the lack of tender pickups is a little bit of a shame, and I will always knock a little bit of a point off 
because of the three pole motors. I wish they would use five pole motors because they are so much better and you would get a much better crawl out of it, I'm convinced, if, you, if they used a five pole motor. However, as it is, the mechanism is pretty good apart from that. At least you've got a proper set of bearings in the Loco, which is what you want. So quality is quite a difficult one. If I was just talking about the Loco, it would be easy to come to an easy conclusion. Good quality, by the way, the Loco. But there are problems. I mean, the packaging, right? Pretty terrible quality. The Loco and rolling stock, pretty good quality. The controller, sort of moderate. Not so bad that I would take a point off. And the quality of the track was sort of moderate goes together quite easily but doesn't stay together very easily either um, so I'm going to knock a point off for the packaging obviously knock a star off for that and I'm also going to knock a star off for the track because it doesn't hold together very well as I've said but apart from that I mean the important parts the loco and the rolling stock are really really good quality it's just whether or not they actually arrive with you in good shape all comes down to whether or not the poor packaging becomes a problem. With mine, I was a little unfortunate, and yes, it did arrive damaged. Whether or not that's normal, I'm not sure, but if you've got one of these, let me know how it arrived and what condition it was in. Value then, now I dread to think what Backman's RRP for this would be. I'm, unfortunately, and quite luckily for Backman, I wasn't able to find the RRP, so I'm going to go on the Hatton's price, benefit of the doubt here again, of £110.46 for which I would say that has to be an unequivocal five star, absolutely astonishing value, especially given the fact that that price is 10 pounds less than Backman's price for the Loco on its own. Just astonishing, so five star there. Overall then, it's a very, very good train set. It's obviously the most upmarket train set I've ever looked at. So 8.5 out of 10, that's pretty good. Into the ranking it goes then. There we go, ninth, it is in the top 10, just above the Hall class by Hornby and below the Backman LMYR class five. It's a very good train set, I can highly recommend this one. So there you are then folks, that is the end of another train set unboxing and to be honest with you, I've really enjoyed it. Um, yes, I'm going to have to look and see if I can find some more train sets to unbox because I've missed doing them, I've realised today. But for the time being, I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, let me know down in the comments what you thought. And for the time being, thank you for watching, thank you for your company and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Alright folks, take care of yourselves and I will see you when I see you. Cheers everybody.